Welcome back to American Valor, a salute to our heroes. Introducing the story of a man who played a central role in America's early years in space exploration, please welcome political correspondents, husband and wife team, Kira Phillips and John Roberts. Thank you so much and good evening. Human history is filled with epic moments of courage and ingenuity. And there are other moments altogether for which the word epic is absolutely an understatement. Almost six decades ago, John F. Kennedy challenged the nation to send a man to the moon. The challenge would test the best of America's energies and skills. It was a challenge that Kennedy was determined to win. 50 years ago, John F. Kennedy's vision was fulfilled in one of the most awe-inspiring moments in human history. Sharing the story of one of the great icons of America's missions to the moon is Allison Janney. On July 20th, 1969, 400 million people worldwide watched in wonder as 240,000 miles away, two American astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, began their descent to the surface of the moon. The front row seats for Apollo 11 belong to the team at Mission Control in Houston, led by 35-year-old flight director Gene Kranz, famed among the controllers for his blonde flat top and dapper white vests. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. With all systems go, the Eagle ignited its engines and descended toward the surface of the moon. Tension escalated as Armstrong noticed boulders strewn throughout the landing area below. Nearly out of fuel, he took control of Eagle and began to search for a clear area. Dust from the surface kicked up as Eagle's foot pads touched down with mere seconds of fuel remaining. At Mission Control, a chill unlike anything he had ever felt ran through Gene Kranz when he heard Armstrong's voice across the radio. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Hours later, Armstrong and Aldrin exited Eagle. In addition to the American flag, they left a plaque which read, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 A.D. We came in peace for all mankind. The son of an Army medic in the First World War, Gene Kranz flew the F-86 Sabre in Korea after receiving his degree in aeronautical engineering. He witnessed the triumphs and the setbacks at NASA from its early days, serving as a flight director for the Gemini and Apollo programs. He also witnessed tragedy, stationed at Mission Control during the launch pad fire that killed Apollo 1 astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. Three days after the loss, Kranz called his teams together at Mission Control. From this day forward, he told them, Flight control will be known by two words, tough and competent. We will never be found short in our knowledge and our skills. Mission control will be perfect. Mission control's motto would be tested once more on the third mission to the moon in April 1970, known to history as Apollo 13. 56 hours after liftoff and 200,000 miles from home, the crew of Apollo 13 heard a blast from the side of their spacecraft as computers restarted and power began to fluctuate wildly. Then came the ominous words from mission commander Jim Lovell. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Okay. Right. Stand by, they got a problem. As Apollo 13 sped toward the moon, quickly losing fuel cell power, Kranz gathered his team and urged them to settle down, protect working systems, and focus on solving the problem. He directed that the crew orbit the moon, using its gravity and the lunar module engine to slingshot Apollo 13 back toward home. Meanwhile, Mission Control would tackle each new challenge as it arose. Failure was not an option. Historic ingenuity under extreme pressure led the crew, flight controllers, and support personnel to work as a team to meet each challenge. Engineers designed an adapter to provide the crew with clean air. Other engineers figured out how to accomplish a complete power-up of the command module from space. 
Everything had to happen within a matter of hours as hundreds of millions gathered around televisions anxiously awaiting updates. After 80 hours of uncertainty, anxiety, and exhaustion, but also incredible acts of ingenuity and devotion, Apollo 13 began its re-entry. The crew and controllers feared that the explosion had damaged the heat shield, which could cause them to burn up upon entering Earth's atmosphere. Now, all mission control could do, all the world could do, was wait. With radio communication blacked out, all awaited in silence. Six minutes later, Apollo 13 appeared on television screens, its parachutes deployed and floating gently toward the sea below. Mission Control erupted in cheers as millions around the world broke into celebration. At his flight director console, tears in his eyes, Gene Kranz wrote into his log, Mission accomplished. Gene Kranz, the Mission Control Team, and the three astronauts would receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom for the successful return of Apollo 13. He would continue on with NASA, serving as flight director through Apollo 17, the final mission to the moon, retiring as one of the legendary figures in space exploration. In the days following Apollo 11's mission to the moon, a bouquet of flowers was left anonymously at John F. Kennedy's grave. Its card read simply, Mr. President, the eagle has landed. This country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who moved forward and so will space. Well, space is there, and we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there, and new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome legendary NASA flight director, Gene Kranz. Yes. Mr. Krantz, it's an honor to be talking to you. If you would take us back to those moments when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, what was going through your mind? That was a great time for me because my team was busy. While the world was celebrating the landing, we had to go through three state-of-state decisions on the surface of the moon. So we didn't begin our celebration until two hours later. So we're in the process of catching up, and uh, we're ready to party, though, as soon as we finished. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you would be. Can you tell me, also, during your time there, tell me about the teamwork that was involved to get Apollo 13 back home. The teamwork was uh, really magnificent. We had a bunch of young pups. I had a uh, good portion of the uh, people that uh, joined Mission Control were Korean veterans. Uh, I had aviators. I had a Marine from the Chosin Reservoir. I had some from uh, the uh, early missile test programs. And the key was is that our leaders let us do the job. They'd step aside and say, how can we help you? So this was a leadership that was truly, I think, unique in America. We had spectacular people. But they, they carried the ball, gave us the responsibility, and then stepped us and led us to run with the ball. What would you like Americans to remember about those magical early days of our space program? I think uh, this evening we're celebrating the Raiders. And I think that it's uh, what America will dare, America can do. And I think we have to relearn that lesson again. We have to dare greatly, step forward, have someone step up and say, this is what needs to be done, turn us loose, and then go do it. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mr. Gene Krantz. Veterans United Home Loans salutes NASA legend Gene Krantz.